greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's Word, the Bible. We are studying from the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. We are uh, studying from the life of Paul the principles which we need to understand for a sustained pursuit of Christian life and Christian sanctification. We already learned three points that we should have a sober self-assessment our, about ourselves. Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 told not that I have already attained or am already perfected but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. That is a verse which we have concentrated during the past two sessions. Not that I have already attained or not that I have become perfect. This is a truth which every Christian should understand and acknowledge. There is still room for us to improve. There is still room for us to mature. There is still room for us to become more Christ-like. And we must have that proper self-assessment. We should not have a, a, a feeling that I have matured enough, I have learned enough, or I have become uh, uh, better enough. No, there is still room for us. Till we reach the finish line, till we finish the course of our life in this world, Till we reach the end of our life, till we come to the finish line, we have to pursue Christ-likeness, we have to pursue sanctification, we have to pursue holiness and for that we should have a, sustain, a, a sober self-assessment. A sober self-assessment can be given by the light of God's word. God's word is a true light which will light our hearts and it will reveal the secrets of our heart and we will be able to have a proper self-assessment. We have already covered that ground and we all already learned that we should put in sustained effort in our Christian life and in our Christian sanctification. Many people think that uh, sanctification should just happen like that. But it is not like that. God's word urges to pursue sanctification. God's word says that it's a fight. God's word says that it's like a building. A builder who is building a building. And for that there is effort. It's like a farmer uh, doing some agriculture. It's, it's like we are trying to or do certain things as God expect us to do according to his word so that he will be able to bring that transforming work in our life. So there is room for us to improve. Self-assessment should be proper according to God's word. Sustained effort. That effort should be according to God's word. And we also learned that these things are based on a solid foundation and that solid foundation is that Paul understood that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Shaul of Thursis was walking in his own way but Jesus Christ the son of glory he took hold of Paul, uh, Saul's life transformed his life, changed him to be Apostle Paul, a loving person. The same way Christ grip over your life. You must understand that. If you have not given your life to Christ, you give your life to Christ and he will hold you with his right hand. He will uphold you. He will preserve you. He will protect you and he will take you all the way to eternity. And that solid foundation should not be forgotten or it, it is a prerequisite that a person be born again. It is a prerequisite that a person be saved. It is a prerequisite that a person acknowledge and confess their sin to the Lord Jesus Christ and be cleansed before they can make any progress in their Christian life or sanctification. And then one more thing we can learn about this solid foundation. 
if you are a true believer in Christ, you need to recognize that your pursuit of holiness in sanctification is grounded upon the solid foundation of justification. And that reality needs to affect the way that you run this race. This is a gospel driven race. As a believer covered in the righteousness of Christ, you run the race of sanctification, not as one who is trying to please God. You are not trying to run the Christian uh, sanctification to earn God's favor, but you are running as one who has already been given God's favor as a gift of grace. And that fact needs to fuel your fight against sin. We need to battle against sin in the strength and in the freedom of that gospel driven foundation. That I can be victorious over sin. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be victorious over sin because Christ has already conquered sin in me by virtue of his work on the cross of Calvary. And as I have received him, as I have believed him, as I have trusted him for salvation, there is scope for me as his work, his sanctifying work, his saving work is at work in my life. And but your justification also need to affect your sanctification in another way. Your justification also need to affect your sanctification in another way. Look again at the text. Paul says, I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ. Paul is saying that Christ laid hold of him for a particular purpose. Paul was laid hold of by Christ with a particular purpose and whatever it is that for which Christ laid hold of Paul, that thing was that for which Paul was pressing on. I will tell it once again, Paul's goal in living Paul's goal in living is entirely consistent with Christ's goal in saving him. Let me explain it once again like this. Paul derives his purpose for this life. Paul derives his purpose for his life from the purpose for which he has been saved. Christ has saved him to make him as an apostle. Christ has saved him to make him as a, an author to, uh, to write the inspired scripture. Paul was uh, assigned to preach the gospel through the Asia Minor. He was supposed to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And all what Christ planned for him and laid hold of his life, Paul took that as his own goal. He did not have a secret agenda for his life. He did not have a, a way off the ground uh, agenda or plan or goal for his life. The entire focus and goal was, why did Christ save me? He saved me with a purpose. Oh Lord Jesus, please reveal those plans which you have for my life. I am willing to live for that and find my purpose and my pleasure in that for which you have purposed for me and you have saved me. And what is that purpose? Why did Christ uh, save Paul? Why did Christ laid hold of him? Romans chapter 8 verse 29, a very familiar passage. Romans chapter 8 verse 29, we read like this, for those whom Christ foreknew, he also predestined to become confirmed to the image of his son. Conformity to Christ likeness is God's aim of our justification. I'll tell it once again. God has got only one goal in saving you and me. God has got only one ultimate goal in saving Paul and John and Peter. It is to make them like Christ. To Christ likeness is the goal. He justifies us to sanctify us. And that sanctify, sanctification is to make us set apart for God. Set apart for God's glory. Jesus Christ is the epitome. Christ Jesus is the ultimate. The person who lived on the face of the earth for God's glory. Jesus Christ is the, at the end of his earthly ministry. 
he came to lay down his life for his people and save he was called jesus because he could, he came as a savior and he told father i have glorified you in the world that was the single goal for which christ lived on the face of this earth to glorify the father so if you and me we are saved if we are justified if we are pardoned of our sin god want to to make us christ like christ like in what whichever way possible and ultimately we will live our life for god's glory and the end of our life as we step into eternity we will be able to say that father we have glorified you in the world and that is what christ accomplished and that is what is supposed to happen in your life and my life and then and then alone our life will be fulfilled then and then alone we will find contentment and joy in this life titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 we read like this Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 for the grace of god has appeared grace of god was always there this god was gracious all through the ages from eternity to eternity he is a gracious god but here in a particular scenario and situation god's word says that grace of god appeared something which was not visible it became visible the grace of god appeared how in bringing salvation to men in bringing men to glory in bringing men to god in bringing sinners to become saints that is god's grace bringing salvation to all men instructing us now listen to me when god bring salvation in my life in when god bring justification in your life when god take lay hold of our life what he will do instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and worldly lust and to live sensibly righteously and godly in this present age if we are living an ungodly life if we are living after the worldly desires and passions of this world our life is a senseless life according to the scripture i am not telling the if you want to live a senseless life you live after the pleasures of this world you live an ungodly life the end of that life is death the wages of sin is death it is appointed unto man once to die and then to face judgment god's word says so clearly but the grace of god has brought salvation salvation from sin salvation from hell salvation from eternal judgment eternal damnation and along with that the grace of god teaches us to deny ungodliness the grace of god teaches us to deny worldly desires god, uh, the grace of god teaches us to deny worldly lust and to live how sensibly if you are living a sensible life if i am living a sensible life we will be living the our life for the purpose for which god has created you and me we have not come into existence just like that we have a creator he created us he 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 and his plan purposed your creation he created you in your mother's womb he is the one who gave you the flesh and blood he is the one who gave you bone he is the one who gave you the marrow he is the one who gave you eyes and ears he is the one who gave you mind and heart and he want you to see him and experience him and live sensibly for his glory for the purpose for which he has created you and grace of god can teach you god's word can teach you to live sensibly and righteously righteously what is righteous in my standard may not be righteous in your standard what is righteous in your standard may not be righteous in my standard but it is it is immaterial we need to do and live righteously according to the standard of god our creator he will decide what is right and what is wrong and he has explained it in the pages of the scripture what is right and what is wrong what is righteous and what is unrighteous what is godly and what is ungodly what is damning and what is 
taking you to eternity eternal heaven grace of god can teach you not just after this life but god's word say in titus chapter 2 that grace of god can teach you to live sensibly and godly and righteously in this present age and that is sanctification but the ground of that sanctification is the grace of god in salvation salvation is the first step of entering into a spiritual uh, arena of your life where you turn from sin and turn to god when you turn from self to turn to god you turn from sin and turn to god you turn from the the temporal to turn to eternity you turn from every distraction and focus to the god who created you god who provided salvation for you and there is no way out the wages of sin is death and surely it will be credited to your account and we have no escape there is no third ground god has prepared an eternity and he has clearly mentioned how we can find our way all the way to eternal heaven jesus christ told i am the way look at his claims Jesus Christ the person of Christ the claims which he claimed for his life itself should make us think about him intently consider him in your life the the claims which the worldly people claim i am the richest and the fastest i am the best or i am the the most influential i am the more most prosperous i am the most successful many many things i am i am i am many things people strive after or claim after but have you ever considered what the, those things which christ has claimed he told i am the way i am the way to heaven i am the way to heaven and no one comes to the father but through me i am the truth i am life if at all you want to experience and enjoy life an abundant life a fulfilled life a content life a life which will take you all the way to eternity you need to consider and accept and believe and receive this unique person of jesus christ he told i am the light of the world then i see light around me in the studio i see light sun sun is there sun gives light i can see some sort of light reflected from sun through the moon and i can see so many things as light but it's all shadow jesus christ claimed that i am the true light of the world he claimed that i am the true wine i am the resurrection and life i am the true bread which can satisfy your spiritual hunger i am the living water the claims which he claimed nobody is even interested in all those claims he is a unique person jesus christ the son of glory god himself came into this world visited this earth almost 2000 odd years back to save you to give you revelation about god who your creator is who you are and what is the ultimate purpose of your life and only when you find christ the vacuum in your heart will go and there is a god shaped vacuum in your heart and my heart and only god is big enough to fill that vacuum saint agustin told those words and jesus christ he can satisfy you and we we learned that grace of god can give you justification in salvation and the grace of god can sanctify you paul goes on to say in that passage that christ gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify us for himself a people for his own possession zealous for good works why did christ come into this world why did he save your life and my life to purify us for himself for himself christ need you christ need me for his glory are you willing and paul was willing and philippians were willing and they could progress in sanctification and so you see that justification has an as its aim not just a positional righteousness by which we are forgiven but also a practical righteousness of sanctification the reason why god saved you is to conform you to the image of his son to make you more and more holy throughout your christian life and so if 
it is the purpose of your salvation if christ has laid hold of us in order to make you more like himself then we better order our lives we better order our entire life according to that purpose do you know what you call a life that is not lived according to the purpose of its designer have you ever thought about a satellite what is the purpose of a satellite huh? which is the the best satellite human being we have been given immense amount of knowledge and understanding by god himself to create satellite and we send satellites to the space and those satellites are roaming around in the space and can you tell me which is the most successful satellite i will tell you the most successful satellite is the satellite which serve the purpose of its designer if a satellite is been sent for a telecommunication if that satellite receive the communication which is sent by the designer and it gives the correct information back that is a successful satellite the same way god of the universe god the creator has given you an opportunity he created you he made you for himself and when you receive his messages and if you give the right messages back to him in worship back to him in gratefulness back to him in thankfulness back to him in submission back to him in holiness back to him in humility you are a successful person otherwise if a life is spent without giving any consideration to the purpose of its designer uh, you know what is that life called it's a wasted life it's a wasted life all the achievements which we think of in this world all the gadgets which we procure all the things we add into our life it can be shattered in a minute recently we had a, a we had a heavy earthquake in nepal our neighboring country people are suffering even today people have lost their real estate people have lost their beautiful building people have lost their flat people have lost their possession people have lost their loved ones everything is so uncertain in this disposable planet but if at all there is something which is eternal and everlasting it is our god so align your life align my life to the purpose of our creator and such a life will be a fulfilled life otherwise our life will be a wasted life dear friend don't waste your life the life that christ died to give you don't fool around with the passing pleasures of sin don't waste your life enslaved to the fleeting gratification of sexual immorality Don't waste your life enslaved to the false promises of drugs and alcohol. Don't waste your life enslaved to the fear of man than the fear of God. Don't waste your life enslaved to pride and boasting and an overinflated view about yourself. When God looks upon him who is humble. God looks upon a life which is humble and contrite and looks to his word and tremble at his word. God's word say that he is an eternally holy God. We are we have been sinning all through our life. We have all turned to our ways, but God has given a way for us to come back to his way. That is through his son and through the that foundation of jesus christ the solid rock christ the solid rock i stand we should be able to face life and we should be able to press on in our christian sanctification uh, don't go on presenting the members of your body as instruments of unrighteousness but present yourselves to god present yourself to god give yourself to god god i give my life to you i have so many limitation i have so much of sin i have so much of uh, uh, ill health i have so many negative things in my life but i give my self to you i give my members to you and when you present yourself to god as those alive from death your members as instruments of righteousness to god your mouth your eyes your ears your hand your life your gold everything when it is been given to christ he will take that life and he will make it a a purposeful life a gospel driven life a life which is worth living 
and a life which is worth dying because your life is going to continue even after death eternal life everlasting life that is what bible promises i urge you to take the the scripture seriously i i urge you to uh, to study the scripture very seriously because there is going to be a time when the scripture is going to be scarce you will not find god's word you will you will crave to hear god speak but you will not have it somebody has told like this if you want god to speak to you read your bible if you want god to speak to you audibly read your bible aloud read your bible aloud and you will hear god speak to you may the lord bless you let us close with a word of prayer gracious god our loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for your word which is so precious and so eternal the principles and pre- uh, the precepts which you have given the statutes which you have given the commandments which you have given it is for our good and for your eternal glory to that end confirm our hearts and align our hearts and enable us to be humble before you and submit to your lordship and submit to your uh, to your purpose so that we will be blessed by you and your name will be hallowed in and through our life in jesus christ most precious name we pray amen